Hi there, I'm John McAdams, founder of the Big Game Hunting Blog, and in this episode I'm going to do a detailed comparison of the new 6.8 Western versus the older 7mm Remington Magnum and 28 Nosler cartridges. I think that most hunters would agree the 7mm Remington Magnum and the 28 Nosler are both fantastic for hunting a wide variety of big game. However, the 6.8 Western is much newer and is not nearly as well understood by the majority of sportsmen. All three offer advantages to hunters, but there are some significant differences between these three cartridges that you need to be aware of. Unfortunately, as is the case with many things involving new cartridges like the 6.8 Western, there is a lot of misinformation and a lot of marketing hype out there regarding the capabilities of this new cartridge. For this reason, it is really easy to get confused when trying to understand the actual strengths and weaknesses of that cartridge compared to more established center fire rifle cartridges like the 28 Nosler and the old 7mm Remington Magnum. So in this episode, I'm going to do a detailed comparison of the 6.8 Western, the 7mm Remington Magnum, and the 28 Nosler in an effort to show the differences between these cartridges so you can make an informed decision on which one will work best for you. As usual, we will start with the history of these three cartridges. The years following World War II in the United States were a true renaissance of civilian firearm and cartridge development. That time period saw a flood of new centerfire rifle cartridges like the 223 Remington, the 243 Winchester, the 280 Remington, and the 308 Winchester. That same general time period also saw the start of the modern Magnum era when Winchester introduced a line of new belted Magnum cartridges that utilized a modified 375 H and H case. The 458 Winchester Magnum came along first in 1956, and it was quickly followed by the 264 Winchester Magnum and the 338 Winchester Magnum during the next couple of years. All of those cartridges utilized a 375 H and H Magnum case necked down or up in the case of the 458 Win Mag and shortened from 2.85 inches to 2.5 inches long. The designers used those shortened cases so all three cartridges would fit in a standard length rifle action, which is the same as cartridges like the 270 and the 30-06, instead of requiring a longer magnum length action, which was the case with the original 375 Holland and Holland Magnum cartridge. Remington took a page out of Winchester's playbook and rolled out their own belted Magnum cartridge in 1962 that was also based on the 375, the 7mm Remington Magnum. Often referred to as the 7mm Rim Mag or the 7mm Mag, the new Remington cartridge also used a necked down and shortened 375 H&H Magnum case. Instead of using .264 caliber, .338 caliber, uh, or .458 caliber bullets, and later .308 caliber bullets like Winchester did with their Magnums, Remington loaded their new Magnum with .284 caliber bullets. Now the .30-06 was and remains the standard by which most cartridges are judged. Will the use of the larger case based on the .375 along with the use of 7mm or .284 caliber bullets by the 7mm rim mag resulted in a significant ballistic improvement over the 30 6 Indeed, the 7mm magnum will shoot the same weight bullet faster than the 30 6 will. Additionally, the smaller diameter .284 caliber bullets the 7mm magnum uses have a higher ballistic coefficient and more sectional density than 30 caliber bullets of the same weight used by the 30-06 Springfield. And this also assumes that we are talking about bullets of a similar type of construction here too. Now, for these reasons, typical 7 millimeter Remington Magnum loads have a flatter trajectory, more energy remaining downrange, and all other things being equal, of course, will penetrate better than 30-06 Springfield loads using the same weight bullets once again, of similar construction. The new 7mm Remington Magnum cartridge also fits in a standard length rifle action. 
and to top it all off, the 7mm Magnum was rolled out at the same time as the now legendary Remington Model 700 rifle. So American hunters and shooters were immediately offered the chance to use a new high-performance cartridge that was available in a well-built, reasonably priced, and very accurate new rifle. With all that in mind, it's not surprising at all that the flat shooting and hard hitting 7mm rim mag quickly caught on with hunters and shooters in North America. Now the 7mm Remington Magnum remains extremely popular among hunters to this day. Now it's not the only or even the most powerful 7mm Magnum cartridge in common use though. Indeed, the 7mm Weatherby Magnum, introduced in 1944, was actually the first mass-produced 7mm Magnum in the United States, and numerous other 7mm Magnum cartridges have come along since Remington's cartridge hit the shelves in the 1960s. This includes cartridges like the 7mm Winchester Short Magnum, the 7mm Remington Ultra Magnum, the 7mm Remington Short Action Ultra Magnum, or the 7mm SOM, and the 7mm Shooting Times Westerner. Now, all of those cartridges have experienced varying degrees of success, but another big 7mm cartridge really sticks out from the crowd, the 28 Nosler. Now, Nosler initially made a name for itself in the hunting community by developing revolutionary hunting bullets like the Nosler Partition, the Nosler Acubond, and the Nosler Ballistic Tip. Well, they dove into the cartridge development world with the introduction of the new 26 Nosler cartridge in 2013. Now, the name 26 Nosler reflects both the name of the company as well as the first two digits of the cartridge bullet diameter, .264 caliber in the case of the 26 Nosler. Now, based on a modified 404 Jeffrey case necked down to shoot .264 caliber bullets, the 26 Nosler was definitely in the running for the title of the world's most powerful 6.5 millimeter commercial cartridge. Now, the 26 Nosler was a big enough success that Nosler introduced the 28 Nosler, which fires 7 millimeter or .284 caliber bullets, as the next addition to their line of Nosler proprietary cartridges in 2015. Like the 26 Nosler, the 28 Nosler also uses a modified 404 Jeffrey case, neck down and shortened to fit in a standard 30-06 length action. The company decided to use a 1 in 9 inch rifling twist rate for the 28 Nosler that is optimal for long high BC 7mm or .284 caliber bullets like their 175 grained Acubon long range bullet. Now the result is a cartridge capable of launching those heavy for caliber in extremely aerodynamic bullets at muzzle velocities in excess of 3100 feet per second. The cartridge is also capable of firing lighter 140, 150, and 160 grain bullets approximately 200 to 300 feet per second faster than the 7mm Remington Magnum. Not surprisingly, the flat shooting and hard hitting 28 Nosler is a favorite among hunters after big game like elk that desire a cartridge offering excellent performance at extended range. The success of the 26 and 28 Nosler spurred the development of further Nosler cartridges. As of 2022, the lineup of Nosler cartridges now includes the 22 Nosler, which shoots .224 caliber bullets, introduced in 2017, the 27 Nosler, which shoots .277 caliber bullets and was introduced in 2020, the 30 Nosler, which shoots .308 caliber bullets, introduced in 2016, and the 33 Nosler, which shoots .338 caliber bullets and was also introduced in 2016. Of all of these, the 28 Nosler is by far the most popular as I record this. Okay, now let's talk about the 6.8 Western. To do that though, we need to go all the way back to 1925 with the introduction of the 270 Winchester. Now, designed by necking down a 30-06 case to use .277 caliber instead of .308 caliber bullets, the original 270 Winchester load shot a 130 grain bullet at approximately 3,140 feet per second. Originally released with the Winchester Model 54 rifle, the cartridge developed a well-deserved reputation for effectiveness on thin-skinned game over the years. The cartridge understandably developed a large and devoted following during the course of the 20th century, 
and the 270 caliber became really linked to the Winchester brand. Now, as good as the 270 is though, and it remains extremely effective, shooters in the 21st century lamented the relatively few choices for high BC hunting bullets available in .277 caliber. This is because the 270 Winchester and the more recently developed 270 Winchester short magnum uses a 1 in 10 inch rifling twist rate. Now that twist rate worked extremely well for the bullets in the 130 to 150 grain weight range the cartridge was originally developed for. Now those bullets work great for many hunting applications, but they don't quite offer the sort of extended performance more and more hunters and shooters are looking for these days. Now shooters and hunters have recently started to place a much higher emphasis on long, heavy and really aerodynamic projectiles recently with the rise in popularity of long range shooting. In response, the various ammunition manufacturers have worked to satisfy that demand with offerings using sleek, low drag bullets. The Nossler Acubon Long Range, the Barnes LRX, the Hornady ELDX, and the various Burger bullets are all great examples of extremely aerodynamic hunting projectiles that have really taken off in recent years. Unfortunately, those slower rifling twist rates used by the 270 Winchester and the 270 WSM hampered the development of long, heavy, low drag bullets and .277 caliber. For example, there are several different hunting bullet options available in 6.5 millimeter, 7 millimeter, and 30 caliber with a G1 ballistic coefficient over .600 like the 143 grain ELDX in 6.5 millimeter with a .625 BC, the 168 grain VLD hunting in 7 millimeter with a .618 BC, and the 210 grain Acubon long range in 30 caliber with a .661 BC. Comparable bullets in .277 caliber include the 145 grain ELDX with a .536 BC, the 150 grain VLD hunting with a .518 BC, and the 150 grain Acubon long range with a .591 BC. Now true, hunters using custom rifles with fast enough rifling twist rates can use some of the really heavy and extremely aerodynamic .277 caliber bullets that are available these days like the 170 grain Burger Extreme Outer Limits with a .662 BC. Now those really heavy bullets simply weren't an option for hunters who don't hand load and who use factory production rifles though. Now that changed in 2020 when Nosler rolled out their new 27 Nosler cartridge. Designed from the beginning to use the new .277 caliber 165 grain Acubon long range with a .620 BC, 27 Nosler rifles used a faster 1 and 8.5 inch rifling twist rate and took the performance of the .277 caliber to the next level by allowing for the use of extremely high PC bullets in a .277 caliber cartridge. Now the Nosler cartridges are excellent performers that fire bullets with higher ballistic coefficients at very fast velocities, but they are still fairly niche offerings and are primarily available in custom rifle builds, with a handful of exceptions. Even so, this development set things in motion for the next domino to fall. Now that domino fell on 15 January 2021 when Browning and Winchester announced the release of the new 6.8 Western cartridge. Also known as the 6.8 Winchester Western, the announcement of the new round took some by surprise. Now instead of just revamping an older cartridge to use heavier bullets, designers at Winchester and Browning decided from the very beginning to build a purpose-built cartridge that will handily outperform the old 270 and 270 WSM. Basically, they wanted a new .277 caliber cartridge that offered magnum performance with very high BC bullets that would also fit in a short action rifle. So here's what Winchester's lead engineer for the 6.8 Western, Kyle Massanelli, had to say. We wanted to get into the untapped potential of bullets above the .264 caliber. We only wanted bullets with a G1 BC above .600 and our goal was to beat the 300 Winchester Magnum's 180 grain Acubond Energy at 500 yards. Okay, this is me talking again. 
To that end, they borrowed a page out of the playbook used in other successful cartridge releases like the 6.5 PRC. Now, similar in appearance to the 270 WSM and the 6.5 PRC, the 6.8 Western has an overall length of 2.955 inches and uses a beltless case that is 2.02 inches long and 0.535 inches in diameter at the base and has a 35 degree shoulder. Though the 270 WSM cartridge has an overall length of 2.86 inches and fits neatly into the traditional definition of a short action cartridge, the 6.8 Western exceeds those standards by a hair with a maximum cartridge overall length of 2.955 inches. Even so, the 6.8 Western will feed reliably from short action AICS pattern box magazines that are so common with many modern rifles. Now, in addition to lengthening the overall length of the 6.8 Western, designers at Winchester moved the cartridge shoulder back slightly and decreased the case length compared to the 270 WSM. Now, similar to what designers at Hornady did with the 300 PRC, this resulted in a little bit more space for the bullet outside the case, which is also known as head height. This facilitated the use of long, heavy for caliber bullets without requiring them to be seated too deeply into the case that they intrude into the powder column. Now these longer bullets also required a faster rifling twist rate for proper stabilization in flight. So designers at Winchester and Browning designed the 6.8 Western for use in rifles with a one and seven and a half inch or one and eight inch rifling twist rate. And one and eight inches is the SAMI standard for that cartridge. The end result is a short and handy 277 caliber cartridge that delivers impressive ballistics that compare very favorably to some noted long range cartridges. So let's talk about the size of the 6.8 Western and how it compares to the 7mm Remington Magnum and the 28 Nosler cartridges. Now the differences between them are pretty stark. And first, the 6.8 Western is physically quite a bit smaller than the other two. Now the 28 Nosler and the 7mm Magnum both have a longer overall length and use a longer case length than the 6.8 Western. The Nosler case is 2.59 inches long and the 7mm Remington Magnum case is 2.5 inches long while the 6.8 Western case is 2.02 inches long. That said, the 6.8 Western is designed to fit in a short action rifle while the other two require the use of a long or a standard length action. Now, while all three cartridges have slightly different rim diameters, they all use a larger diameter cartridge case and require a larger magnum bolt face. The 28 Nosler also has a rebated rim, while the other two do not. The 7mm Remington Magnum uses a belted case, while the 6.8 Western and the 28 Nosler are both beltless cases. It's important to note that the actual case diameter of the 28 Nosler and the 6.8 Western, which is 0.55 inches and 0.555 inches respectively, are both larger than the non-belted portion of the 7mm Remington Magnum case, which is 0.513 inches in diameter. Now the 7mm Remington Magnum also uses a case with a little bit more taper to it than the other two. Now additionally, the 7mm Remington Magnum has a 25 degree shoulder, while the 28 Nosler and the 6.8 Western each have a steeper 35 degree shoulder angle. The shoulder is also moved a little farther forward with the 28 Nosler as well. So for all these reasons, the 28 Nosler has the largest case capacity of the group. The 7mm Remington Magnum comes in second, and it has a larger case capacity than the 6.8 Western, notwithstanding all those other things in favor of the 6.8 Western we just talked about, because it's just so much longer. Now, bullet size is another one of the important differences between these cartridges. The 6.8 Western uses 0.277 inch diameter bullets, while the 7mm Remington Magnum and the 28 Nosler both use 0.284 inch bullets. The 6.8 Western is capable of using bullets in the 130 to 150 grain range, like the 270 Winchester. However, it was designed with a faster rifling twist rate specifically for use with heavier and more aerodynamic 165 grain, 170 grain, and 175 grain bullets, which are most common in factory loads for the 6.8 Western. On the other hand, the majority of 7mm rim mag factory loads shoot bullets in the 139 to 175 grain range. 
of these 140 grain, 150 grain, 160 grain, and 175 grain loads are the most common. Finally, 28 Nossler factory loads most often use bullets in the 150 to 185 grain range. 150, 155, 160, 162 grain, and 175 grain bullets are the most common there. Now everything else being equal, the smaller diameter .277 caliber bullets do have a higher ballistic coefficient and a higher sectional density than larger diameter bullets of the same weight from 7mm cartridges. We'll dive more into the nuts and bolts of exactly what this means in practical terms later. Now the 68 Western and the 28 Nosler are also loaded to a higher pressure than the 7mm rim mag of 65,000 psi versus 61,000 psi. Now let's talk about ballistics. As you can probably imagine, the differences in external dimensions of these cartridges do translate into some important differences with their ballistic performance. This is illustrated when you compare Winchester Expedition Big Game Long Range, Winchester Ballistic Silver Tip, Nosler Trophy Grade Long Range, and Nosler Ballistic Tip Factory Ammunition. Specifically, the 6.8 Western loads are from the Winchester Expedition Big Game Long Range and Winchester Ballistic Silver Tip line and use 165 grain Acubon Long Range with a .620 BC and 170 grain Ballistic Silver Tip with a .563 BC bullets. The 7mm rim mag loads are from the Winchester Expedition Big Game Long Range and Nosler Ballistic Tip lines using 168 grain Nosler Acubond Long Range with a .616 BC and 150 grain Nosler Ballistic Tip bullets with a .493 BC. The 28 Nosler loads are from the Nosler Trophy Grade Long Range and Nosler Ballistic Tip lines and use 175 grain Nosler Acubon Long Range and 160 grain Ballistic Tip bullets with a .648 BC and a .531 BC. Now even though those factory loads are from two different companies, this is still an apples to apples comparison because all of those loads use bullets that, in practical terms, are identical. The Winchester factory loads use Nosler bullets, just with a different name and with a black Lubolix coating for the ballistic silver tip. They have the same BC and are otherwise identically constructed. Now the 6.8 Western and the 7mm Remington Magnum are very close in performance. The 7mm Magnum ballistic tip load fires a lighter bullet at a faster velocity than the 6.8 Western silver tip load, so it does have a slightly flatter trajectory, but just 2 inches at 500 yards, but it also has a bit less energy at all ranges. Now since that 6.8 Western load uses a more aerodynamic bullet, that gap does grow in favor of the 6.8 Western from 4 to 12% more kinetic energy from the muzzle out to 500 yards. Now the 6.8 Western does have the edge with that Acubon long range load at all ranges though. The 6.8 Western fires a bullet that's a little bit lighter, but just 3 grains, but also a little more aerodynamic and at a slightly faster muzzle velocity. For this reason, the 6.8 Western has a flatter trajectory and more kinetic energy at all ranges. Once again, we're not talking about a very big difference though. The 165 grain Acubon long range from the 6.8 Western has about 2 inches less bullet drop than the 168 grain 7 mm rim mag Acubon long range at 500 yards. So for all intents and purposes, I think it's safe to say that the 6.8 Western and the 7 mm Remington Magnum are practically identical in performance with those loads at these ranges. Now at the same time, the fire-breathing 28 Nosler surpasses both in performance with both trajectory and retained energy. Both 28 Nosler loads have between 4 and 6.8 inches less bullet drop and between 4 and 47% more kinetic energy than the 6.8 Western and the 7mm Remington Magnum at 500 yards. But that 165 grain Acubon long range load from the 6.8 Western is really special. Yes, both 28 Nosler loads definitely outperform it, but that particular 6.8 Western load stands apart from the rest of the crowd in this class of cartridges and bullets. And we'll talk more about that here in a second. Now let's talk about how much a crosswind impacts those same loads out to 500 yards. 
Now this is another one of those areas where the 6.8 Western shines. Now both 6.8 Western loads offer better resistance to wind deflection than their comparable loads with the 7mm Remington Magnum because they use higher BC bullets. All four loads for these two cartridges are pretty closely matched, but with the 6.8 Western having a definite edge. Heck, that 165 grain Acubon long range for the 6.8 Western even outperforms the faster 28 Nosler 160 grain ballistic tip load. Only the 175 grain Acubon long range from the 28 Nosler, which is a heavier bullet weight, has a higher BC, and a faster muzzle velocity, has better performance in the wind than the 6.8 Western, but still we're only talking about 1.5 inches less wind drift with that 28 Nosler load at 500 yards. And the differences are of course smaller at shorter range. Now all things considered, the 28 Nosler Acubon long range has a small edge over the 6.8 Western, but that cartridge also has a small advantage over the 7mm Remington Magnum as far as wind drift goes. But let's talk about recoil now. When you compare recoil produced by hand loads approximating the performance of those factory loads we just talked about with the Nosler Acubon long range for each cartridge when fired from identical 7 pound rifles, the results are interesting. Now it's true that that 175 grain Acubon long range load looks really good on paper for the 28 Nosler, but that performance comes at the price of a lot more recoil. That load fires a heavier bullet at a faster velocity and uses a lot more powder to achieve that performance. The end result is that the 28 Nosler has about 33% more free recoil energy than the 6.8 Western and about 27% more free recoil energy than the 7mm Rim Mag. Now it's also worth taking note that the 6.8 Western has a little bit less recoil than the 7mm Magnum with those particular loads because it burns a little less powder and uses a lighter bullet. Now even the 28 Nosler doesn't have a ridiculous amount of recoil. The recoil produced by this particular load is getting up there and is certainly stout, but it's also not so excessive that it is impossible to shoot. This can be mitigated to a certain extent with the use of a suppressor, a muzzle brake, or a good recoil pad, or some combination of those things. So the extra recoil of the 28 Nosler isn't necessarily a deal breaker for many people. It is still worth considering though, and this is an advantage in favor of the 7mm Remington Magnum and especially the 6.8 Western. Now additionally, there are a couple of other factors also worth considering. First, the 7mm Remington Magnum and the 28 Nosler use larger diameter bullets than the 6.8 Western. Now the larger diameter .284 caliber bullets used by those 7mm cartridges have about 5% more frontal surface area than the .277 caliber bullets used by the 6.8 Western. All other things being equal, a bigger bullet will make a bigger hole, cause more tissue damage, and result in more blood loss. Now this is a small advantage in favor of the 7mm Remington Magnum and the 28 Nosler. Especially when combined with the fact that the 28 Nosler carries more kinetic energy downrange, those larger diameter bullets can also be helpful when hunting really big game like elk. On the other hand, as we covered earlier, many of those longer, heavy for caliber .277 caliber bullets the 6.8 Western is optimized for have a higher ballistic coefficient than the most common bullets used in the 7mm cartridge, especially when bullet weights are similar. Now that's not a hard and fast rule though. For instance, the .277 caliber 165 grain Acubon long range used by the 6.8 Western has a BC of .620. This is a little higher than the .284 caliber 168 grain Acubon long range used by the 7mm Remington Magnum with a BC of .616. The 175 grain Acubon long range used by the 28 Nosler does have a higher BC of 0.648. However, it's also 10 grains heavier, and as far as I know, that bullet is only available as a factory load with the 28 Nosler, though hand loaders could use that in other 7mm cartridges to include the 7mm rim mag. As another example, Nosler makes a 150 grain ballistic tip bullet in both 0.277 caliber and 0.284 caliber, with BCs of 0.496 and 0.493 respectively. 
while those differences are indeed very small in favor of the 6.8 Western, they are still worth considering because those slightly more aerodynamic projectiles don't slow down as fast and they are a little bit more resistant to wind drift. They also have a relatively high sectional density. Sectional density is a measure of the ratio of the diameter of a projectile to its mass. All other things being equal, a heavier projectile of a given caliber will be longer and have a higher sectional density and penetrate deeper than projectiles with a lower mass and lower sectional density. 150 grain, 165 grain, and 170 grain .277 caliber bullets have sectional densities of 0.279, 0.307, and 0.317 respectively. At the same time, 150 grain, 168 grain, and 175 grain .284 caliber bullets have sectional densities of 0 0.266, 0 0.298, and 0 0.310. Now, Nosler does offer a .284 caliber, 185 grain reduced drag factor bullet with a sectional density of .328. The 195 grain Berger Extreme Outer Limits bullet has a sectional density point of .345. While both bullets do have a higher sectional density than those used by the 6.8 Western, the RDF bullet is designed for target shooting. And, as far as I know, that Burger EOL is only available in handloads. So aside from a couple of very specialized and or target bullets in 7mm, the .277 caliber bullets used by the 6.8 Western have a slight edge in sectional density compared to the 7mm Remington Magnum in the 28 Nosler with the most commonly available hunting bullets in factory loads. There's nothing wrong with the killing power or penetration capabilities of either 7mm cartridge. But this is another advantage in favor of the 6.8 Western and could help the cartridge perform better on game than one might think just from looking at the ballistics of the cartridge on paper, which even the stuff on paper is still pretty good and, and comparable or slightly better than some of these 7mm cartridges. What about accuracy? All three are certainly capable of outstanding accuracy in the right hands and in good rifles, and it's really hard to pick a winner here. On one hand, the 28 Nosler in particular has great ballistics on paper, which can help the shooter battle environmental conditions and effectively place rounds on target. On the other hand, the on paper ballistic performance of the 6.8 Western lags just a little behind the 28 Nosler, but it also has substantially less recoil. Basically, the low recoil and the ability to use really heavy for caliber high BC match grade hunting bullets will work in favor of the 6.8 Western to facilitate exceptional accuracy and help maximize the shooting abilities of the hunter using the cartridge to a greater degree than either of the 7mm cartridges. In, in any case, the details will vary depending on the exact rifle, ammo, and shooter in question but all three cartridges certainly have excellent potential for accuracy. Now let's talk about barrel life. This can be a pretty big practical difference with these cartridges. The 28 Nosler in particular has a reputation for being rough on barrels, though not quite to the extent of the 26 Nosler. This is because the 28 Nosler uses considerably more powder than either of the other two cartridges here in a similar size space. This means that in general, the 28 Nosler will simply wear out barrels faster than the 7mm Rim Mag and the 6.8 Western. Exactly how fast this occurs depends on a number of factors like the quality of the barrel, exact ammo used, etc. For serious target shooters, this can be a concern, but it can still potentially be an issue for hunters as well if they do not exercise care. This is especially true for those who are using the 28 Nosler at longer range where smaller changes in performance and accuracy add up quickly. The details will vary, but it is not unheard of for some 28 Nosler rifles to see a drop off in accuracy after just a few hundred rounds. Others will last 800 to 1000 rounds, but it's unusual to hear of them lasting much longer than that with full powered ammunition. Now the good news for hunters is that typical barrel life for even the 28 Nosler is more than enough to last for many years of hunting with no issues. 
Now, exactly when the barrel becomes unusable depends on the rifle, as well as the hunter in question, and what sort of performance they expect from their rifle. Those who want extremely tight groups for long-range shooting are probably going to want to change their barrel out sooner than those with slightly lower standards. All other things being equal, barrel life for the 7mm Magnum and the 6.8 Western will probably be similar to each other and both will have a probably longer barrel life than the 28 Nosler. So where do we stand with each cartridge? The 6.8 Western is capable of firing smaller diameter but more aerodynamic bullets at a slightly faster velocity than the 7mm Remington Magnum. This translates into the 6.8 Western having a slightly flatter trajectory, more resistance to wind drift, more retained kinetic energy downrange, and less recoil than the 7mm Remington Magnum. Now the 28 Nosler fires larger diameter, heavier, and sometimes more aerodynamic bullets at a significantly faster velocity than the 6.8 Western. Most 28 Nosler loads will have more recoil than most 6.8 Western loads, but will also have more retained kinetic energy, a flatter trajectory, and more resistance to wind drift. However, some 6.8 Western loads will meet or even exceed the performance of certain 28 Nosler loads in terms of bullet drop and wind drift. Now, both the 7mm Remington Magnum and the 28 Nosler fire the same diameter bullets, but the 28 Nosler is capable of firing heavier and more aerodynamic projectiles at a significantly faster trajectory than the 7mm Rim Mag. For this reason, the 28 Nosler has more recoil but also retains a lot more energy at longer range, has more resistance to wind drift, and a flatter trajectory. All right, let's talk about ammunition availability for these three cartridges. The 7mm Remington Magnum in particular is an extremely popular centerfire rifle cartridge. None are exactly rare, but of the three, the 7mm Rim Mag is by far the most widely used. For that reason, during normal times, ammo is usually easiest to find for the 7mm Rim Mag. In general, 7mm Remington Magnum ammo is typically the least expensive of the three. The big ammo manufacturers like Barnes, Berger, Browning, Federal, Hornady, Nosler, Remington, Sierra, Swift, and Winchester all produce an incredible variety of ammo for the 7mm Remington Magnum in most of their really popular lines of ammo. This includes almost everything from plain Jane ammo like Remington Core Lock and Winchester Super X to more specialized ammo like the Hornady Precision Hunter and Federal Terminal Ascent lines. The fact that the 28 Nosler is a more niche cartridge is reflected in the ammo choices for it. As of early 2022, 28 Nosler ammo is available in the Federal Terminal Ascent line loaded with a 155 grain Terminal Ascent bullet the Hornady Precision Hunter line, loaded with a 162 grain ELDX bullet, the Nosler Trophy Grade line, loaded with a 160 grain Acubon bullet, the Nosler E-tip line with a 150 grain E-tip bullet, and the Nosler Trophy Grade Long Range line, loaded with a 175 grain Acubon Long Range bullet. At this instant, the Winchester Expedition Big Game Long Range line loaded with 165 grain Nosler Acubon Long Range bullets, the Browning Long Range Pro Hunter line loaded with 175 grain Sierra Game Changer bullets, the Winchester Ballistic Silver Tip line loaded with 170 grain Ballistic Silver Tip bullets, and Winchester's Copper Impact line loaded with 162 grain Copper Impact bullets are the only loaded ammo options for the 6.8 Western. Now there is actually a surprisingly good selection of factory loaded 6.8 Western ammunition for purchase these days. At this time, Browning and Winchester are the primary sources of factory 6.8 Western ammo, but it's usually not too hard to find ammo for the cartridge as of early 2022 anyway. Okay, now let's talk about rifles. And the rifle situation with these cartridges is very similar to the ammo situation. Of the three, the 7mm Remington Magnum is the most popular, followed by the 28 Nosler and then the 6.8 Western. The 7mm Remington Magnum is available in several different versions of the Remington Model 700 and Winchester Model 70. The same goes for the Browning X-Bolt, Browning AB3, Christians and Arms Ridgeline, Kimber Hunter, Mossberg Patriot, Ruger Hawkeye, Savage Axis, Savage 110, the Tika T3, Weatherby Vanguard, and the Winchester XPR. Basically, 
almost every popular centerfire rifle in current production is available in 7mm Remington Magnum. Things are a little different with the 28 Nosler though, which is primarily available in higher end rifles that are best able to take advantage of the long range performance characteristics of the cartridge. The 28 Nosler is available in rifles like the Christensen Arms Mesa, Ridgeline and ELR rifle, several different versions of the Browning X-Bolt, several different rifles from Bergara, from Gunworks, and from Seekins Precision. Now, of course, Nosler also offers the 28 Nosler in their M48 rifle and their new M21 rifles. Now, at this time, Browning and Winchester are the only major manufacturers producing rifles in 6.8 Western. But once again, there's a pretty decent selection of 6.8 Western rifles available from both companies. Now, as of early 2022, 6.8 Western rifles include 21 different versions of the Browning X-Bolt, 14 versions of the Winchester XPR, and 9 versions of the Winchester Model 70 bolt-action rifles. Now, during normal times, the 7mm Remington Magnum is by far the most common and easiest to find, and the same thing goes with rifles that are less expensive. Now, as of early 2022, though, we're still not living in normal times. The 6.8 Western was first released in the middle of the big ammo shortage in early 2021, which actually meant that rifles in that chambering were fairly easy to come by until the last couple months of the year. Most of those examples were snapped up by November or December, though. As I record this in February of 2022, 7mm Remington Magnum rifles are the most common on dealer shelves, followed by 28 Nosler. Availability with all three cartridges is starting to improve, though, as some of the new 2022 models from the various different companies that make all this stuff are starting to hit shelves. With all that said, it's also important to realize that gun manufacturers tend to put longer barrels on rifles chambered in Magnum cartridges in general. This is because those cartridges need a longer barrel to effectively and efficiently burn that larger powder charge. This holds true for all three cartridges, but especially the 7mm Remington Magnum and the 28 Nosler. Barrel lengths do vary depending on the manufacturer and exact model, though. However, it seems like the 6.8 Western is normally available in rifles with a 24-inch barrel, though some models have 26-inch long barrels. A handful of models have shorter 22-inch, 20-inch, or even 16.5-inch long barrels in some cases, though those shorter barrels are somewhat unusual and are more common on quote-unquote suppressor-ready models. 24-inch and 26-inch barrels are pretty standard with the 7mm Remington Magnum, and the same goes for the 28 Nosler, which is most common in rifles with a 26-inch long barrel. But once again, you can find rifles with a shorter barrel. All things considered, rifles chambered in those two 7mm cartridges do tend to be slightly longer, heavier, and more unwieldy than those chambered in 6.8 Western. Now, having a shorter and lighter rifle is more important on some hunts than on others, so just keep all that in mind. Okay, so we've talked about a lot with these cartridges, and now we'll get to the final $10,000 question. Which one is right for you? Do you primarily hunt medium-sized game like white-tailed deer, feral hogs, or black bear at ranges within 200 yards. All three are extremely effective deer hunting cartridges and will absolutely get the job done on medium-sized game if you do your part. There's nothing wrong with using any of these cartridges on deer inside 200 yards, but all three are really more gun than you need for that sort of work. The 28 Nosler in particular will be harder on both your shoulder and your wallet than the other two as well. If you're going to be hunting in thick brush or in the tight confines of a deer stand, remember what I just mentioned about the size difference of those rifles. The extra couple inches and overall length of a rifle can be a real headache to deal with when you're trying to quickly and quietly maneuver for a shot. None are actually really great options for a truly compact rifle, but the 6.8 Western or 7mm Remington Magnum with a 24-inch barrel will be a little easier to handle than a rifle with a 26-inch barrel, like with the 28 Nosler or even with those other two cartridges. Are you looking for the cartridge better suited for longer range situations for a game like mule deer or pronghorn antelope in open country where you might need to take a shot at several hundred yards? Once again, they'll all work really well in this role and situations like these are where they start to stand apart from other cartridges. 
The 28 Nosler carries more energy out to extended range than the other two, but the 6.8 Western and the 7mm rim mag are both extremely effective in this role as well, and both still carry more than 1,500 foot-pounds of energy out to 500 yards. Do you want a cartridge that is better suited for a game like caribou, moose, elk, eland, kudu, or red stag hunting? All will work extremely well when used on bigger game. The 28 Nosler is the clear winner for a hunter looking for a really good cartridge for use on bigger game at extended range. But, once again, the 6.8 Western and the 7mm Remington Magnum are no slouches either. Most hunters do not need the capabilities of the 28 Nosler, and something like the 7mm Remington Magnum will work great for the majority of elk hunting situations. In fact, the 6.8 Western actually edges the 7mm Remington Magnum out in energy, trajectory, wind drift, and even recoil with certain loadings, making it an outstanding choice in this role as well. The 28 Nosler with that 175 grain Acubon long range load is still the way to go for those who want more power, the flattest trajectory, and the most resistance to wind drift at extended range, but once again, not everybody needs that. If you're going to be hunting elk or something like that, say inside 400 yards or something, and the 6.8 Western and the 7mm Remington Magnum are both excellent choices. Now, are you specifically hunting brown or grizzly bear? What if you hunt in Canada or Alaska and you need a heavy hitting cartridge just in case you find yourself on the wrong end of a brown or grizzly bear attack? I don't recommend any of these cartridges for actually hunting the big bears, though they will work in a pinch. While I would prefer to carry something heavier like a 338 Win Mag in grizzly country, I'd go with the 7mm Remington Magnum or the 28 Nosler over the 6.8 Western since it uses larger diameter and heavier bullets. Make sure you use premium heavy for caliber 175 grain bullets if you go that route though. Are you sensitive to recoil and in need of a serious low recoil cartridge? All three have fairly stout recoil, but the 6.8 Western in the 7mm Remington Magnum are definitely better lower recoiling options than the 28 Nosler, with the 6.8 Western probably winning here out of the three. But once again, they all are fairly stout recoiling, and we're still talking about cartridges with a lot more recoil than something like a 243 or a 6.5 Creedmoor. Now the 6.8 Western, the 7mm Remington Magnum, and the 28 Nosler are all excellent rifle cartridges. While the 6.8 Western is the latest flavor of the week and does offer certain advantages over the 7mm Remington Magnum in some aspects, there's not a darn thing wrong with the 7mm Remington Magnum either. Likewise, while the 28 Nosler has a very clear advantage over the other two on paper, few hunters really need the extra capability offered by the cartridge, but for those who need that capability, they tend to really need it. Now, though the differences between them are fairly significant in some respects, they're all suitable for many hunting tasks. So what you need to do is carefully analyze your potential needs before making a decision. In the end, a lot of this comes down to personal preference and matching the capabilities of these cartridges with your preferences and what you really need. So choose the one that you think fits your needs the best and that you feel most comfortable with, and it will probably serve you well afield. Now, if you enjoyed this video, then please make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel right now. Just click the red subscribe button below to make sure you don't miss out on any of my new videos about hunting gear reviews, cartridge comparisons, and more. For more detailed information on popular hunting cartridges and what they're best suited for, click on the link in the description below or go to huntingguns101.com to get a free ebook I have written on the best hunting calibers. Now I'm going to turn it over to you. Which cartridge do you prefer? The 6.8 Western, the 28 Nosler, or the 7mm Remington Magnum? What game have you successfully taken with them? Let me know by leaving a comment on this video right now. Thanks for watching, have a great day, and good hunting.